I have the Englander 28-3500 furnace and this is what I did. All right, Dave here again. Uh, I got a bunch of emails from folks out there that are Englander owners that are considering doing a modification to their stove like I did and uh, they want to know exactly how I did it, how I fitted the, the pipes in and whatnot. So. So here goes. Um, well, uh, the pipe inlet is here on the front of the stove. As you can see, it's a one inch pipe with one inch nipples. I have a one inch flange there on the end. Um, and it comes through the inside like so, right through the side, right above the rail, um, almost even with the rail so that the pipes can actually rest right down on the rail. Um, they were raised up a little bit because I was uh, trying to use washers and whatnot, and trial and error, etc. So you probably go down a little bit further if you wanted to. Take a look at the pipe configurations there. Uh, the one-inch pipe uh, has an elbow that goes down to the back there into a reducer that turns the pipe from one inch to three-quarter. It goes into a three-quarter T. goes up and comes back on this pipe here with an end cap. Then on the other side of the T there's another elbow that goes into the first upper tine and uh, a T, another nipple, another elbow and then all the way up to this this tine as you can see the holes there they come all the way up to an end cap up front here um, and those three are identical. Um, they go across the back. If you look here, you can see that I used a slightly wider nipple on one of them so that I could get it wide enough so that both sides would rest down on the rails so that I wouldn't have to hold up the back. Um, I have a fi extra fire bricks in there. You can see the fire brick on the back. Put fire bricks on the sides. Um, I also have fire bricks on the, on the upper part some pieces of steel I had cut at a machine shop uh, a two inch piece in the, in the back another two inch and another two inch and some uh, three by six squares on the side so that I could separate them and I could just lay a framework up there and then set the uh, bricks on them also my my uh, my metal I don't know if you can see that or not but the metal pipe or uh, metal plate is still up there and uh, I had to flip it upside down um, and I slide it a little forward as well just get the heat circulating as far as possible um, I had to flip it upside down because there was a uh, like a, uh, a metal tab that would have rested down on the bricks so I had to flip it upside down that's the first step actually uh, if you email me I can give you a parts list and some quick directions on the uh, things that I did. Uh, if you look at the tines here, uh, you can't really tell, but they are angled up because the back of the stove there actually angles up. Um, you can see the side one. If I didn't uh, have it configured this way, I wouldn't be able to push those pipes up and angle them up in the center. Uh, they'd be this low. Um, okay, one of the other modifications that I made it made a huge difference is plates on the parts list it's going to be your your plates that are 15 inches by one and a half inches and what I did is if you look on the back of your stove in here you've got these large air gaps slots that go feed down into your into your uh, ash pan and what I found was is that they were so large and there was so much air coming up out of there that no matter what I set my bottom uh, air feed to it would just burn through wood like crazy so I think this is one of the most important things that I did is I took my 15 inch pieces of eighth inch steel and I just drilled a couple of center holes the other nice thing about that too is that uh, the frustrating part about this stove is that the ash pan isn't quite as wide as the inside of your firebox so all the ash falls through these corners here on both sides and you gotta constantly pull out your ash pan from the bottom like so and then take the whole thing out and then get inside there inside your stove and scrape and clean and it's a real pain this prevents that um, so basically these pieces of metal just slide down in here in the slots that are already there you may have to smack them a little bit but they cover everything up 
so that you don't get all that ash falling through there. And I drilled the two center holes just to kind of give me some breathing ability all the way down the back of the stove. So there you go, there's the one, two, and the three. The front one I leave open, uh, primarily when I'm feeding my stove. I feed most of it to the back, and uh, as the stuff burns and whatnot, I just scrape it forward. And as you can see here, I get a little bit of ash that falls up right on that front slot that's still open. Um, that seemed to make a big difference. Stuff you're going to need. Hole saws. You're going to need uh, three for the project. This is a 7 eighths. This is a 1 and 3 eighths for the nipple. And uh, you're going to need a 1 and 7 eighths for the outside hole. Um, you're going to want to drill your initial hole 12 inches, 12 and a half inches down and 3 inches in. So 12 and a half down, 3 inches in, centered. Um, and that'll be the 1 and 7 eighths so that you can get a collar with another nipple that will actually be going through the inside piece of the stove into your elbow. Now I had to create some washers for the inside there. If you look in there you can see there was technically because the pipes are sitting slightly inside the firebox because the pipes are sitting slightly inside the firebox the edge of that elbow didn't quite meet the edge of the stove so I had to build my own washers to seal that seal that gap in there I built it out of um, slightly larger pipe I think it was inch and a quarter pipe and basically the inch and a quarter pipe fit right down over like my hand is now over the pipe so that it would go right up against the stove and give it a good seal up against the inside of the stove so I have a couple of washers I had them just cut some pipe into a half inch and three quarter inch pieces so that I could space it out there and put my elbow right up against it so that it completely sealed that area I also use some high temp gasket cement uh, for stoves to furnish cement um, to seal it all up and that's it. And then once the collar is through that outside hole with the nipple into your pipe on the inside, nice and tight, everything is tight, 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 so that it's all sealed up. Then I was able to put another nipple into this flange on the inside and basically just tighten it right up, about halfway threaded, and then another nipple on the outside here that goes into the elbow. And this is a male-female elbow with the valve on the end. Don't skimp on the valve. The valve was about 20 bucks uh, each, but that allows you to completely shut off the air. If you ever had a, uh, if you ever had a uh, chimney fire, that would be your only way to kill the air, is to just kill this and then uh, close the other vents on your stove. Um, so that's it. If any of you have any questions, feel free to email me. If any of you uh, use some of my plans or some of the things that I did, let me know. I'd be interested to find out if I was any help. Um, good luck. Also, I have a step-by-step uh, -step that I kind of wrote for my own purposes. So if uh, any of you are interested in it, just uh, email me and I'd be happy to share. Uh, catch you later.